For the BHS Stage 3 ride assessment, the rider is observed riding two horses in dressage and then one for show jumping and one for cross country. Take a few moments to get to know your horse and to find out about your horse. For the dressage part, riders ride each of the two horses for around 20 minutes. Throughout the assessment, we'll expect to see good postural alignment, combined with a balanced and independent seat, and a greater depth of feel and suppleness than expected at stage two. At this level, the riders should be demonstrating a more refined application of the aids, with effective riding that clearly shows they can maintain the horse's current level of training. We'll expect the rider to be able to build a rapport with the horse, and be effective in their riding within the time constraints of the assessment. It's worth remembering that if you put yourself under too much pressure and get a little tense and nervous, this can have an adverse effect on the horse and its way of going. What we're looking for, as always, is an ability to maintain respect and ride in harmony with the horse at all times. A rider at this level should have developed a deeper understanding for the horse's way of going which will be clearly demonstrated through the more advanced control and technique. This may include leg yield, turn on the forehand, and lengthening and shortening of the strides. We we'll want to see the rider's clear ability to ride the horse positively forward to a receiving hand, resulting in the horse working towards an appropriate frame for novice level dressage. We'll also expect to see each of the horses working happily and in good form relevant to their individual capabilities. Discussion forms an important part of the assessment. We'll expect the rider to show an appreciation for the horse's schooling needs and identify aspects in need of further development. In both demonstration and discussion, this should be based on basic principles of training and should always reference the scale of training. We'll also expect the rider to be able to demonstrate and communicate the value of schooling, exercises and a variety of training methods in the horse's mental, muscular and gymnastic development. We we'll conclude with an opportunity for the rider to review their performance and how the horses have gone for them. This will include discussion on how effective the rider felt their chosen exercises were in influencing the overall performance of both horses. We'll use this discussion to gauge the rider's understanding of how to evaluate and progress a horse's work. When discussing the horses, we'll expect reference to some key observations and connections the rider made from a visual assessment of the horse prior to riding it. For example, the horse's age, conformation, composition and muscle development. All of this could tell the rider a lot about the horse and its likely way of going. That's why it's good to get into the habit of having a quick look at the horse before you mount. For the jumping part of the assessment, riders will ride two horses, one for the show jumping and one for the cross country. The show jumping course will have a minimum of eight jumping efforts, including fillers on at least four of the fences, a double, a related distance with a couple of changes of rein. There will be a mix of uprights and spreads, and at least two fences will be at a maximum height of one metre. The course could be in an arena or on grass. Whichever it is, the going will be good underfoot. Riders will have a chance to walk the course, which would be set and numbered, and should be prepared to discuss their strategy for riding it. Before the jumping, we'll want to see the rider prepare the horse with an appropriate and logical warm-up showing all three paces and changes of rein, as well as a fair amount of canter work with a good energy, rhythm and balance. At this level, we'd expect the rider to ride in a balanced and independent seat with a very secure lower leg and to maintain this while riding in a forward light seat. We're looking for the ability to ride positively, showing sympathy for the horse's needs and not hindering the horse in any way and with enough harmony and stability to maintain independence with the rein aids. We'll want to see the rider demonstrate good control around the course, showing good lines and approaches to the fences, delivering the horse straight and in the middle of each jump, and showing good control on landing with immediate planning for the next fence. Key things we're looking for include 
an ability to judge and maintain the appropriate pace for jumping, allowing for the pace to be maintained through turns and changes of rein, and ensuring the correct canter lead is being encouraged and if necessary corrected at all times. We'll be assessing the rider position not only between the fences but also through each phase of the jump itself. From the final approach, the takeoff, through the airborne phase to landing and riding away from the fence. It's important that we see the rider is able to maintain balance with the horse and have control over their body position at all times. We want to see the rider to be looking up and forward to the next fence and beyond, maintaining the rein contact, but allowing the horse enough freedom through its neck and body to jump in good form. Discussion both throughout the jumping session and at the end is an important part of the assessment. As well as giving an evaluation of horse and rider performance, we may also talk about how to introduce a horse to jumping and how to progress a horse's jumping. The cross-country course will normally have a minimum of eight jumping efforts, up to 90 centimetres. These may include bank, rails, brush, spread and ditch fences, and a combination of at least two related fences. Depending on the facilities, the course may have to be set by the centre or the assessor. Riders will begin the cross-country session by walking the available cross-country fences. You'll then need to be prepared to discuss your planned route, the fences, your approach and strategy. This should include consideration of the ground conditions and other factors such as the weather or horses turned out in the field next door. Before jumping the course, we'll want to see the rider preparing the horse with an appropriate and logical warm-up. This could include cantering on both reins and especially moving the horse forward, increasing the pace and slowing down. Next, we'd expect the rider to progress to working over practice fences chosen with the final course of fences in mind. For the cross-country round itself, we want to see the rider show a really positive canter that is rhythmical and balanced and an appropriate pace for the horse and the terrain. We also want to see effective control over the horse and clear understanding for jumping the different types of fences. With approach, speed and body position all being adjusted according to the fence type. Key things we're looking for include good balance and security of position so the rider can be independent to the rein aids, balanced alignment in the jumping position, with core strength and security of the lower leg and upper body being maintained between approaching, over and riding away from the fences and the ability to ride forward from the leg aids to the contact without compromising the rider position and showing consideration for the horse's needs at all times. We we'll conclude with the opportunity for the rider to talk about how they felt the round went and how the horse performed. We will expect this to be a methodical and structured evaluation specific to the horse and the course just ridden. <laughs>